Welcome back. It's Monday, jumping into Mark chapter three all week long. And I just wanna encourage you with this. I'm trying to inspire you to read the Bible every single day. And you may ask this question, why the same chapter over and over and over? Doesn't that get kind of old and monotonous? I used to think the same way when I would hear somebody preaching or a sermon and they would say, turn to the book of Jonah. And I would immediately go, oh, I've read that before. I already know that story. Or about Noah and the ark. I already know that story. And so I would kind of read into, well, there's nothing more the story can say because I've read it. And then something great happened because I decided instead of thinking I already know the story, I began to pray this. God, whatever you want to speak to me today, do so. And the moment I did that, the Bible became what it really is. It became the eternal wisdom of God every single day. And now I can read the same story over and over and over and something brand new jumps off the page. And I love that. So that's why I encourage you to read the same chapter five times during the week, Monday through Friday. And every day say, God, let your eternal wisdom speak to me today. Hey, it'll be great for you. And you'll be able to turn around and go, man, I've learned so much as I've mined out the truths of the scripture. And now I just want you to hang around as I read to the end, because I want to pray for you. I want to put my faith with your faith. This is going to be your best year ever. Let's jump right in. Mark chapter 3, 35 verses long. Here we go. Jesus went into the synagogue again and noticed a man with a deformed hand. Since it was the Sabbath, Jesus' enemies watched him closely. If he healed the man's hand, they planned to accuse him of working on the Sabbath. Jesus said to the man with the deformed hand, come and stand in front of everyone. Then he turned to his critics and asked, does the law permit good deeds on the Sabbath or is it a day for doing evil? Is this a day to save a life or destroy it? But they wouldn't answer him. He looked around at them angrily and was deeply saddened by their hard hearts. Then he said to the man, hold out your hand. So the man held out his hand and it was restored. At once the Pharisees went away and met with the supporters of Herod to plot how to kill Jesus. Jesus went out to the lake with his disciples and a large crowd followed him. They came from all over Galilee, Judea, Jerusalem, Idumea, and from east of the Jordan River and even as far north as Tyre and Sidon. The news about his miracles had spread far and wide and vast numbers of people came to see him. Jesus instructed his disciples to have a boat ready so the crowd would not crush him. He had healed many people that day, so all the sick people eagerly pushed forward to touch him. And whenever those possessed by evil spirits caught sight of him, the spirits would throw them to the ground in front of him, shrieking, You are the Son of God. But Jesus sternly commanded the spirits not to reveal who he was. Afterward, Jesus went up on a mountain and called out the ones he wanted to go with him, and they came to him. Then he appointed twelve of them and called them apostles. They were to accompany him, and he would send them out to preach, giving them authority to cast out demons. These are the twelve he chose. Simon, whom he named Peter, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, but Jesus nicknamed them sons of thunder. Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, Judas Iscariot, who later betrayed him. One time Jesus entered a house, and the crowds began to gather again, Soon, he and his disciples couldn't even find time to eat. When the family heard what was happening, they tried to take him away. He's out of his mind, they said. But the teachers of religious law who had arrived from Jerusalem said, he's possessed by Satan, the prince of demons. That's where he gets his power to cast out demons. Jesus called them over and responded with an illustration. How can Satan cast out Satan, he asked. A kingdom divided by civil war will collapse. Similarly, a family splintered by feuding will fall apart. And if Satan is divided and fights against himself, how can he stand? He would never survive. Let me illustrate this further. Who is powerful enough to enter the house of a strong man and plunder his goods? Only someone even stronger. Someone who could tie him up and then plunder his house. I tell you the truth. All sin and blasphemy can be forgiven, but anyone who blasphemes the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. This is a sin with eternal consequences. He told them this because they were saying, he's possessed by an evil spirit. 
Then Jesus' mother and brothers came to see him. They stood outside and sent word to him to come out and talk with them. There was a crowd sitting around Jesus and someone said, Your mother and your brothers are outside asking for you. Jesus replied, Who is my mother and who are my brothers? Then he looked at those around him and said, Look, these are my mother and brothers, and anyone who does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. Man, what great stuff. Will you hang around with me all week long and let's just pull it out together, keep reading Mark chapter 3 every single day and say this, Eternal God, speak to me your wisdom today that I may make it real in my own life. I want to take a moment and pray with you. I don't know what your need is. You do. Here's the beauty of God. He even knows the secret of your heart. He knows the things you're struggling with. He knows the anxieties you're facing. And I just want to put my faith with you right now. You may be in a car. You may be watching this at home or at your office. It's just scrolling through Instagram. But I believe God's going to touch you in a supernatural way. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, I put my faith with everyone who's listening to this, and I ask you to bless them. I ask you to keep them with your power. I ask your eternal wisdom to touch them on every realm of their life. Bless their marriages, bless their children, bless their jobs, bless everything they put their hand to. And as Jesus said here in the Gospel of Mark, God, when there's feuding and when there's strife and there's confusion, a kingdom cannot stand. And so, Lord, I pray for every bit of feuding going on with families and friends, all of the strife, all of the anxiety of relationships, that it would stop today and there would become great strength. I bless you. I bless you with the greatest year you've ever had. I bless you with favor of God. I bless you with healing. I bless you with joy, contentment, and life. Have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow.